Hello everybody and welcome to my video, Getting Tidier. I hope you're well and thank you for watching my video and continually supporting me on my tidying, decluttering, sorting, trying to sort out my house, get my house in order, clear out my house, journey. So I start the video by finishing off what I started the other day and I'd, I'm ashamed to say that I'd left my, my mat and my lounge in a bit of a state. But that was because there were quite a few items I needed to check with my daughter, what she wanted me to do with them, whether they were for charity pile, whether she wants to keep them and use them, um, or whether they could be sold in our sale. I know I keep talking about the sale, but that is going to happen. I just, needed to, I just need to choose a date. That's what I need to do. So I did manage to sort out quite a lot here and actually I got to the point where one of the grey containers that slide very neatly in the, into that cupboard um, was almost empty and what I've decided to do, the only thing that's in there, well there's a few photographs, but the main thing that's in there are birthday, Christmas, anniversary cards that I want to keep and there's not many because I've binned quite a few today um, but what I decided was that you always say to me put like with like and I have got cards all around the house so my daughter's birthday cards from like when she was one or two I'm going to keep where they are. I'm going to leave them where they are but I've got anniversary birthday Christmas cards in lots of different places around the house I've got some up in uh, my bedroom and in my little study area where I've got a little chest of drawers I've got some there I've got some in the card drawer, you know, the card drawer that I go to to send a card, but also it's half full of cards that I've received and um, a couple of other places. So what I'm going to do is at some point I'm going to go through all of them and I'm going to get rid of the ones that I no longer want to keep and I'm going to put all of them in, um, in that one tray, that one area. So you can see I managed to get all a lot of that sorted out. I've got a big pile for the bin and a big pile of recycling. Um, my problem this week is my recycling bin is completely full and my rubbish bin was completely full, which is good. Good, so it shows that I'm getting rid of stuff, um, but I've not got anywhere now to put it. Um, partly my rubbish bin was full of all different things I've been getting rid of, but also I've been breaking up my old fence panels, you know, the ones that I took up outside and we put new ones in. I've been breaking them into pieces. I managed to rope my husband into helping me a bit as well, but I've been breaking them. And then I asked my neighbour, uh, she doesn't hardly have any rubbish, and it was the rubbish bins this week. So I asked if she used my gardening bin. So I asked her if I could use her rubbish bin so I pulled that to my garden and I filled that three quarters the way with bits of fence panel and then I put rubbish over the top because sometimes they can be a bit funny with what I put in the bin so I didn't want any problems to be caused. It's only like very very thin pieces of wood so I don't think I'll have a problem but you never quite know. So we've done a few jobs in the house today um, trying to sort things out because tomorrow is my daughter's birthday celebrations so she's extremely excited um, do you remember me saying on my previous video how um, my dad's partner doesn't really like him going out anywhere without her and doesn't sort of understand that I like to spend time with my dad and I want my daughter to spend quality time with her granddad um, it seems that my dad completely understands how I feel and what I mean and has tried to explain it to his partner, um, but she doesn't understand. So to kind of strike a compromise, like I was explaining the other day, I have to book holiday from my work. And so I don't really want to spend, you know, the Thursdays that I've booked off from work or the Fridays that I've booked off from work. Um, I want to spend that time with my daughter or my husband or family members. Um, there's always an assist, insistence that my dad doesn't go anywhere by himself. So anyway, I struck a compromise to say, well, how about we do one Thursday, we do something all together. And then the other Thursday, I just, do we just do something just with my dad? I sent this message to my dad 
anyway, that didn't go down very well either. Um, so I don't think I'm going to ever be able to win with this one. Um, just try and sort of tiptoe round. I just thought, well, if we can strike some sort of compromise, everybody will be happy. Um, but what always seems to happen is my dad's partner um, feels that she's not wanted or we don't want to go out with her. We don't want to spend time with her um, rather than realising it isn't actually anything to do with her. It is about the relationship that I have with my dad and wanting to spend time with him. But there you go. Families are complicated, aren't they? So my dad came round just before lunchtime. We had lunch together and then we went out um, to a place called Potterheim, which is in Norfolk. Had a little look round there. And for the first time ever, we went round um, this really, really old church um, that's got links to like Roman times, the whole place at Potterheim with the potteries. It's fascinating for anybody who likes history. Um, I do do a couple of clips in this video so you can have a little look. So I show the area of the broads and then I also show this church. As I said, I'd never seen it before. There's only 133 round towered churches left. Um, incredible history, how old they all are. So I hope you'll enjoy that. It's just a very, very short clip. Okay, so uh, we've been busy sorting out presents for my daughter and making sure everything's all ready for her. So she's having family come round. Uh, the celebrations yesterday with her friends went well. So we went to the cinema and went for a meal. Although, can you believe, I've always just turned up at the cinema, never thought it needed tickets. I got there and I thought for a second the lady said there are no tickets left. But she actually said, oh, we haven't got many tickets left. And there were only enough tickets um, and not in a line, which I couldn't quite believe. But the girls didn't seem to mind. And thankfully, it's not the sort of thing you're going to sit there chatting through, are you? It's not like the restaurant we all sat separately. Uh, so three of the girls sat, two girls sat next to each other, then one a little bit further away, then one just behind, and then me much further back, which doesn't really matter if I sat away from them. The film was quite good. Uh, they all seemed to enjoy it, which was nice. And then we had a nice meal afterwards. Um, while my husband joined us for the meal, but while we were in the cinema, my husband made my daughter's birthday cake. So this year is a little bit different. Now, we always make a free-from cake. When she was really small, she used to have a chocolate free-from cake, um, free of egg, wheat, dairy, Um it's quite good, really. So the egg used banana and the various other ingredients, which make quite a nice sponge. And then we then found a different recipe, which is more like vanilla. And then we've done a whole load of different shapes. So she's had a Moana cake. She's a frozen cake. She's had a teddy bear. She's had so many different things. Basically, whatever asks, whatever she asks for. Um, we do unicorn we've done as well. I can't think at the moment what she had last year. She had it in the number 10. Oh, it was a stitch cake. So it was like all blue. And then she had stitch figures and there were waves and all sorts. So this year she asked for a woodland cake with woodland animals on. That's what she wanted. I'm not quite sure where she got the idea from, but that's what she asked for. And so I said to her, because she really likes 15s. So I said, well, the fact that you really like 15s, she's not actually that keen on cake. So I said, well, why don't you, why don't we see if we can make a cake, a 15s cake? So I like the fact that it's, those of you that are from Ireland will know all about 15s. Those of you that don't, then I'll have to tell you about it. Um, but they're absolutely delicious. And that's a Northern Irish uh, recipe. And I quite like that as a nod to her family history. So her great granddad was a Northern Northern Irishman and very proud of it. And um, I think it's quite nice for that sort of connection. So my husband came home and did that. And so rather than doing like the normal tray bake or the roll, He's done like four rolls and then rolled out some green icing and then we've done the decoration. I was a bit miffed that he put the animals on, 
because normally we do it together. Normally I make the cake and he does the decoration because he's more artistic than me. Uh, but this time he's done the 15s and then put the figures on. So tomorrow I'll put the candles on. So she's very pleased with how it looks. So that's the main thing. Um, I always makes me laugh because like what's under the icing? I, you know, you'd, I'd make a cake and then part of it would sort of collapse, but you'd manage to sort of reattach it with a bit of icing. And then you, once you've covered it with icing, nobody knows what goes on underneath. So I used to always laugh at that. I love the fact that she comes up with all these different ideas. And um, so we've got all these different photographs all over the years of all the different cakes we've made. So hopefully it's going to taste as good as what my husband normally does. And what's really good is we can get all the ingredients for that, which is perfect for her. It tastes exactly the same as one that's not free from. Um, goodness me, though. You need coco desiccated coconut and all the desiccated coconut, I think I'm saying that right, has a nut warning. And with some things, it's okay to take the chance because I either contact the company and they say, oh, well, there's nuts in the factory, but there's nowhere near where this is being processed, for example. But with coconut, I think that's too much of a risk. Of course, coconut is not a nut, um, but I think there's too much of a risk because sometimes they end up nuts, seeds, that sort of thing goes on the same processing plant. So that means that my husband makes his own designated... Des designa oh, desiccated coconut. He makes his own. And uh, so it takes quite a while to bake into the oven and all sorts. But he does a fantastic job. So um, we'll all look forward to having a piece of that cake tomorrow. So uh, you can see on the picture, I've done sort of like tidy up. I don't like putting cards in dust. So I wanted to make sure the whole area was dusted. And um, she's got some bags there, all birthday presents from her friends. It was quite nice when my dad came round this morning. She wanted to show my dad her room and how it was all sorted and tidy. And I, I was then doing lunch. So I said, oh, maybe granddad will help you put some of those clothes away. So they opened up the wardrobe in the drawer and I heard my dad say, oh, do you want me to help you fold these up? So they took everything out of the drawer and he helped her fold everything up. But I'm really going to make a point of saying to her like every day, anything to put away in your room? So we just constantly keep on top of things. So a massive thank you for those of you that have recently commented on my channel. Very, very much appreciate all of your comments. Um, those of you that have recently subscribed, etc. Very much appreciate it. I'm going to go through some of your comments now. Before I'm going to go, before I go through my first comment though, um, I think it was uh, Brooke spotted those books on top of my bookcase. Can you see those that started out a couple and they couldn't really be seen? And then I added a few more and added a few more. So now they can all be seen. Um, I really struggle, though, with books. There's, I don't think I can really get rid of any more books. There's some books that I've not looked at for ages. So I don't want to get rid of them. I really love them and they don't have them in the library. Um, so unless I create another bookcase at the moment, at the top there is where they're going to have to stay. OK, so comments. Coffee Loving Queen 4122 uh, said, In Italy, they have skirting boards, as your daughter mentions. They call it batiscopa, which means it protects the walls of being hit with a broom while sweeping. Well, that's interesting. Thank you for that. And I read that word out to her and she said, oh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> she knew that word. I don't know how she... some of the words that she knows. I've got no idea. No idea how she'd know the word for skirting board in Italian. So for those of you, a couple of people said, what is a skirting board? So I think you might call them floorboards or something different in, in if you're in America or other parts of the world. So it's the little edging, the bottom of the wall that joins the floor, the floor and the wall to like to protect the bottom of it, I guess. Um, here in England, depending upon the age of the house, they might be very straight um, certainly the ones from our house, because it's a 1930s house, they're quite curved and shaped. So that's why we took them to a special place to have them redone when we needed new ones. Um, Carolyn says, uh, you didn't let anybody down. You're incredibly busy. Sharon Mummy says, your daughter's room is looking amazing, Emma. Thank you very much. 
such strides there. Huge improvements. Very well done. Thank you so much for your lovely comments. Um, I think you were all right. So you know how I've been jumping all between lots of different rooms. Um, I do feel like I need to do that to maintain all the rooms. But in terms of doing a really thorough declutter, I did need to focus. And I'm glad I focus, as focused on my daughter's room. Tracy Four said, you don't let us down at all, Emma. Your little girl's room is looking brilliant. Well done. Oh, thank you. Zoe says, happy birthday, mini Emma. Have a really lovely time. Oh, Emma, I felt really felt for you when all that hard work disappeared. Gosh, you work so hard. I think you're beginning to realise it'd be nice to have a little time for you. Being busy constantly is kind of addictive in a way. <laughs> it is. There is. We have to remind ourselves we're not robots with a battery. We have to look after our battery. Many years ago now, I forgot and came to grief. Oh, what do you mean by that? Many years ago, I forgot and came to grief. Emma, you're fabulous. Love, love, love your channel. Oh, Zoe, what a lovely message. And thank you for all those nice little pictures. A teddy bear present, a party picture. And a hug. Really? Look at this one oh, coming over to have something nice. to eat. My daughter did smile when I said that she was called Mini Emma. She liked You're that. beautiful. Um, Coterine Koshan. Thanks for posting this video. It got me started on the main bedroom of our house. I have a lot of trash and things to donate, donate already. Coterine Koshan. Well done. That is fantastic. What sort of things are you getting rid of? Uh, so she's got a lot of rubbish, but also things to donate to charity. Well done. So glad you found that show, Brooke says. I watch it on YouTube quite often. They for sure would not consider you a hoarder, silly goose. We have baseboards. Oh, that's it. Baseboards. Uh, Karen asked. We have baseboards in the US. Yay, I love your insights about working on the evenings. It's so hard having a work-life balance, especially when you do a lot of work from home. That's right. And do you know, I really felt like I should, I should work tonight. And I really decided, no, I'm not going to work tonight. And my husband said, no, you don't need to work tonight. So I did do some stuff in the house because I've got all the family coming around tomorrow. But I also had a little, I watched some television, wrapped some presents up tidied up the dining room and then I thought to myself about what I was doing 12 years ago. So at this point 12 years ago I'd been in a ho the hospital a lot uh, the day before her birthday and then uh, my waters broke but I was sent home and I think we had like some sort of like takeaway or something that was quite quick and easy to eat because it was quite late when we got back um, but I was just not sleeping at all not sleeping at all but the day that she was born was the day that I worked out that she was due the hospital said that she was late but I think the hospital got the dates wrong uh Tammy Eaton so Tammy's new here so welcome Tammy new subscriber from southern US now I'm sorry I'm going to say this wrong again I'm in Arkansas Ar Kansas. I'm so sorry if I say that wrong. I came from Feral Housewife. Oh, thank you for coming here. Uh, Feral Housewife always says lovely things about my channel. That re I really appreciate her lovely comments. She seems such a lovely person. Uh, your channel was mentioned on a live. Yes, I put my phone on and I suddenly saw she was live. So I quickly went and had to look at her page. Thank you, Tammy, for finding your way here. I'm so glad that you've joined us. Uh, Carolyn says I'll be so glad to see the top of the bureau. Uh, Jane says don't worry about part two I'm still decluttering I don't know where all the stuff comes from. I know it makes you really think doesn't it? Really makes you think. Uh, Karen Howard says pantry organiser riser on the back of the white bureau to make a second tier to display your daughter's treasures. Yeah that's an idea. What? Like some sort of contraption that could sit on the back there to give another layer or maybe put a shelf in. That's a good idea. What is a pantry organiser riser? Is that a particular piece of furniture? 
Pam says, hi Emma, I really feel of you concerning your time with your dad. I definitely agree that time spent with him and that your daughter gets to spend with him is very important. Is your dad different when his partner is around? I know friends who have said their parent is much more mindful of showing affection in front of their new partners. Either way, it's not about his partner. It's about you and your daughter and your dad. Yeah, absolutely, Pam. Thanks for your support. Uh, The good thing is my dad does completely understand and he has tried to explain this. And I think the difference is also that um, my partner, my dad's partner has got children and they don't have their dad because their dad passed away. So, the, you know, they are not going to feel that same way because they don't have their dad. So for me, you know, I'm I'm very thankful and grateful that my parents are very well and I enjoy spending time with them. And um, it's just not the same. I won't talk about certain things when family mem- when it's family members, you talk about certain things that you might not talk about when other people are there. And I know families come in all shapes and sizes, don't they? Um, but I also think it's really healthy in a relationship to do the odd thing without the person being there. You know, like I, I, I do my guides. Um, obviously, my husband doesn't come along to that. My husband does various like wargaming things. I don't go along to that. It's his time just to enjoy himself. And the same with me with my volunteering. Um, Pam says, your idea of a Fiat 500 convoy sounds fun. Knowing you, I'm sure you'll make it happen if it's possible. I'm hoping so. I'm thinking that I need a minimum, really. I think 10 cars would look quite good. But really, I'd like a minimum of 20. So I'm going to be searching I, when I went out today to Potter Heim, I took my leaflets with me. I went and spoke to a lady who was sitting in the car and I put leaflets on uh, the windscreens of other cars. So I'm hoping to get as many as possible. Um, I think in the US, our skirting boards are their base boards. I could be wrong, but I think that's what I've heard them called. Great vlog again and great to see you. Thank you, Pam, so much for your comments. I'm also interested um, about uh, your grandchild and they were having that operation, weren't they? Um, Sharon Root, I was over there on a trip in 2002. I just love it. Do you have some recipes? I would love that. So Sharon, do you mean you were in England in 2002? And what sort of recipes are you interested in? Because let me know what sort of thing you like. Um, I don't know what I consider sort of typically English food. Um, it's not probably considered that exciting elsewhere in the world. Um, Carolyn says, hopefully once the playroom has gone over, you can probably move a few more things out of your daughter's room. Yeah, absolutely. And your dish drainer is getting quite full. My kitchen is really getting a bit of a state, Carolyn. It really is. I've done more work on it today, but it's behind, to say the least. I've also just thought, Sharon's saying about recipes, you have to try 15s. Sharon, they're delicious. Absolutely delicious. So next comment was from Janet. And Janet says, we're not divorced, our daughters are grown, and I think it's wonderful. They like spending time alone with each of us. People who make everything about themselves are ridiculous. She doesn't understand because she can't control your time. Sounds insecure to me. And do you know, Janet, you're right, and it's very sad. I think often when people are in sort of insecure, they've they've had issues in the past or in their childhood or with other people, and um, so then that does then mean that that then, you know, whereas other people might just interpret, oh, that's just what the person wants to do. They interpret it to be about themselves. Uh, Janet says, my middle daughter is actually my stepdaughter. I always made sure her and her dad had time alone. Her mother is probably the worst human being ever. Moved away when the daughter was 14. Told her she had her life and the daughter had hers. Aww. 14 is just really, really young. The work that I do is with like a lot of them, my learners are 18 and 19 and that's really young. 
you know, that you're so, so, so naive and you so still need your parents, let alone 14. Um, now that my daughter's children, that's seven and soon 10, she wants to play grandma. My daughter says, no, you can visit, but you're not their grandma. She's seen them three times in their lives. I don't get involved because the daughter told me not everyone is kind and her mother's behaviour hasn't changed when they talk. It's very sad. I've tried talking to her mother in the past and get nowhere. Do you know, you can really try with some people, but you don't get anywhere. You feel so, so hard. Um, I, this, you know, there's always challenges in families, isn't there? Um, my family is, and my my husband's family are very, very different people. Uh, but I, I always make an effort because this, I try to make sure everything's nice for my daughter. I really do. Even though I've been in numerous, I mean, I dread to think some of my family, um, I'm sure that, that what they probably say, well, that, you know, that's, you know, you get certain people that talk about everybody in a negative way when they're not there. And so, you know, that they're probably doing it about you. And I think, and still I will invite certain people around my house and uh, I, I sort of thought of this one time when I was at church and the pastor was talking about how many chances do you give people? And I think some people have been given so many chances and have been so mean. And even when you, when people are mean, I think if someone's upset someone, they'd never, certain people would never even say sorry. Oh, I'm sorry I upset you. I'm sorry I hurt you. I'm sorry I've said that. Oh, I'd had a couple of gins, and I didn't mean what I said, uh, but never never any apology. Um, and I just think, and what happens, you just have to suck it up and, um, you know, possibly allow the person to treat you like it again. But I do think there's a limit. And at what point do you say no? What point do you say no? Uh, Karen says, mosquito repellent, dig a hole in the ground and pour in the contents... Rinse the containers and put in the recycling. Job done. What I'm worried about, Karen, was that there was warnings over all of them that, um, you know, do not put into water courses, uh, do not put in their animals, uh, long lasting damage, etc, etc. However, in the end, I did put them in the bin. And the reason why I suddenly thought I could put them in the bin was, well, the mosquitoes were sitting on the repellent, weren't they? So therefore, because they're so old, they've lost their potency. Potency. So I ended up putting them in the bin after all. Nan Holmes says, does a car boot sale mean you actually sell things out of your trunk? Or is it more like a garage or yard sale? Asking from Nashville, North Carolina, USA. Well, thank you, Nan, for, Nan Holmes, for being here. Great to, great to see you here and thank you for your comments. Uh, so traditionally, yes, um, car boot sale would have been selling things from your car boots. But what happens, uh, they're always on a Sunday, well, nearly always on a Sunday. Um, but you have like um, a pasting table out, like, you know what you do wallpaper on? You get like a pasting table and a few other tables, maybe a picnic blanket, and you lay all the things out. But what happens is some car boot sales is the minute you open your car boot, you get people leaning in, trying to grab stuff. I, and I'll give you a pound for this, give you 50p for this, all that sort of thing. Others are a bit more civilised and like nobody, no buyers can come on the pitch until a certain time. But we'll have to see what we're, we're going to do. Because on Saturday, we're going to look at this car. If we get this car, the boot is going to be bigger, which then means that we can go to a car boot sale in that because I can't go to a car boot sale in my little tiny Fiat 500. I won't be able to get everything in it, will I? So you can see my dining room wasn't too bad. That's because my husband did a bit of tidying up and he also took loads of washing that had been piled up by the radiator. He swept up the other day, which was good, and moved the table and cleaned under the table. So I didn't have quite so much to do in preparation for people coming round tomorrow. Um, I still want to change some things on my mantelpiece above my fireplace. I still feel this table's too big for the room, but this table is so, so useful. It opens up um, 
it's, 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 it is a really good table. You just can't get tables like that. I've looked in a few other places. These, um, those big, the two dresses that I've just got dry, cleaned and dried, all the stains come out and I'm going to sell them for my daughter. And then those lovely rugs, they're like quite heavily cut cotton base, but my daughter has said she doesn't want them back in the room. She says they feel like worms when you walk on them and they all fill with dust. But what I like about them is you just put them in the wash. I put them on like an eco cotton wash and they come up really, really well. But she doesn't want them anymore. So I've now got to think what I'm going to do with them. I'm not sure there's anywhere really in the rest of the house we'd have them. I think briefly I might have had one in the dining room. And I used to have them at the other house that we used to live in. So I probably had them hmm, not far off, 20 years. And then you also see me cleaning the skirting boards and washing the bit of the wall. Because I was looking, sorting stuff out. And um, I think it was at actually just before dinner time. And I sat down for dinner. And for some reason, I turned around. I think I was talking to my husband. And I glanced at the skirting boards. They looked really bad. So I thought, I've got to clean those. Uh, we use a, a certain type of paint called Farron and Ball, which is absolutely amazing stuff. It's more expensive, but it lasts and it's washable. And yeah, it's really, really good stuff. So thank you very, very much for watching my video. I'm nearly at the end now. So thank you for being here. Thank you for your ideas, comments, suggestions. Very much appreciate them. Let me know what you've been up to the last sort of couple of days and how you're getting on with your decluttering journey. Also interested in any fitness ideas. Uh, obviously it's coming now towards the end of the summer, leading up to the Christmas period, dare I say that word. So also thinking what things I could do from a fitness perspective. So thank you all. Thank you for being here and I'll see you in my next video.